let's look at kind of predicting uh, boiling points and solubility in some solvents. And in order to do this, we will need relatively similar structures. So you'll notice that all of these structures up here have a benzene ring, and they all weigh somewhere about the same amount. And so that will help us to predict the boiling point. So when we're looking at this, we'll need to pick out which molecules have what kind of intermolecular forces. And so um, I'll just kind of underline the ones that just have the induced dipole, induced dipole forces. And that's going to be this one, um, this one, so benzene, toluene, um, this di-substituted benzene, and also this dichloride, because it's in the 1,4 position, and therefore it is not polar, because there's no dipole, it's a symmetrical molecule. Now the ones that have a dipole are just this one right here. And then, oh, I drew, I drew this one twice. So I'm just <laughs> gonna cross that out and just say these two have uh, hydrogen bonding. So these will be the highest, this will be the next highest, and then these are going to be the lowest. So let's look at it now and see which one has the lowest and, and then on up. So here's benzene that has the least molecular weight. It's the most compact structure. And so it should have the lowest boiling point. And it does, it's, it's about 80 degrees. Next up is toluene, which has only one substitution on it. So it's a little bit bigger than the benzene. And it's about 110, 111 degrees, somewhere around in there. And then we can get into the dye substituted That is 139. And then finally, this dichloride. Now, the chloride is more polarizable. It has a larger molecular weight. It's easier for those electrons to move around a little bit. And so the boiling point on this one is much higher than these others. So that one's 173. But when we get into something that is permanently polar, right, because it's not the same symmetry, it, it is a symmetrical molecule, but not in terms of avoiding a dipole, um, then this gives us a little bit more polarity. Actually, it gives us polarity, so it gives us a little bit more temperature but you can see that the chlorines just in themselves are doing quite a bit in the dispersion or the induced dipole, induced dipole interactions to really increase this. And then we get up into the hydrogen bonding. So this molecule here has one hydrogen bonding um, OH group on it. This one has two. And so this one is going to be the lower boiling point just from the fact that it has one less hydrogen bonding part. And this is 202 degrees. And then the one that I kind of misdrew a little bit there. 
so it'll draw better here. This has got two groups. It's even more polar because they're both pulling kind of in the same direction. And we get up to 281 degrees C. So hopefully you can kind of rank these in their boiling point. Now let's jump down to the second list I have, and we'll talk about solubility. Now it really depends on what kind of solvent you're using, and the order would be completely different if we're using a different solvent. So let's just look at what it would be if we're trying to dissolve each of these in hexanes. Hexanes is just a six carbon long chain. Simple, right? And so we really need to pick out which out of these is most like hexanes. And the easy answer to this is pentane. It's, it's just one carbon different. It has everything the same. And so these are going to be infinitely soluble in each other. So we have pentane, that's the most soluble. And then we need to move to what's the next? Well, it's really between acetone and diethyl ether, right? Both of these are have a dipole and they have some hydrocarbons on there, but this one has a lower dipole than this ketone does. This is a little bit more polar of a bond here. And so we can predict that the uh, diethyl ether should probably be a little bit more soluble. Maybe not quite as soluble as uh, pentane, but they should dissolve quite well. And then, of course, next should be the acetone because the, the other two options here have hydrogen bonding and hexanes does not have hydrogen bonding, so it's not similar. So all of these, I expect, would dissolve fairly well in hexanes. Then we're getting into things that it's not going to like as much. So we have one pentanol and then we have ethylene glycol or one, uh, two, di, uh, ethane diol. This, uh, this has two hydrogen bonding groups and it's gonna be very polar. This has one, so this one should be more soluble in our hexanes. And the diethyl ether should be the least, or sorry, not the diethyl ether, the ethylene glycol. should be the least soluble. And of course, this order would be completely reversed if we were in water, because this would prefer to have uh, an interaction with something that hydrogen bonds. And so if we are in solvents that have that, then this would dissolve very well. So would um, the one propanol. Acetone would dissolve a little bit, not much. Same with diethyl ether. And the pentanes is not going to dissolve very much at all in water. So we would really need to look at what kind of solvent we have and just how different it is from that. So that's a little bit about looking at intermolecular forces and trying to predict some boiling points and trying to rank some solubilities. This can be useful just to have an intuitive sense for where things should be. Um, but of course, it's no substitute for actually looking up the data or doing the experiment if you can't find the data or you've made a new molecule. Part of why we look at this is just to see, hey, where about should it be? And so we kind of know where to look and what to expect when we're trying to measure something that's new. Or if we're trying to set up a reaction that we're picking an appropriate solvent so everything can be dissolved and it makes the reaction run that much better when things are soluble and able to move around in the solution. 
So thank you for joining me for this video and we'll see you in the next one.